is we're going to go through, um, I guess we, you know, everybody knows one another except for maybe. They may not know me. Yeah. So we'll um, introduce ourselves really quickly. And uh, I think we should probably go ahead and get started. I mean, people will likely trickle in, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, we'll go through this presentation that Efficiency First put together for us. It'll go pretty quickly. And then um, there's a slide in there that is like, OK, so what projects do you guys want to work on? And I think at that time, um, we might perhaps should we get through the whole presentation and then let Forrest talk? I mean, well, yeah, I think yeah, so. I think so let's just, start. let's just, at that slide, we'll pick three things that we want to make a priority, and we'll get through the entire presentation, which should take about, I would say, 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. Uh, and then we'll let Forrest, I'm sure one of the projects that we're going to select as something we need to continue to pay attention to and work on is going to be the energy efficiency rules and the development of the, the program or programs that come out of that. So we'll let Forrest um, talk about the success of yesterday and um, any other topics you really want to address. Uh, but we also want to talk about next steps as it relates to um, the energy efficiency rules and uh, the development of the Quick Start program. So um, let's start. All right, so this is, the, um, this is the first general meeting of the Louisiana uh, Efficiency First chapter. And essentially, I'm um, surprised Tracy's not here from HLN because Tracy was actually one of the founding members of Efficiency First, um, I was, I've been told. And um, Efficiency First works really diligently, as you'll see uh, as we go through the presentation, on um, supporting the home performance industry. And I said we were going to do introductions, so we should do that uh, now if you don't mind. My name's Terry Bilar. Uh, Kirk and I work together with uh, Mr. Green Gene Insulation. And I'm Kirk. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Greater, <laughs> and uh, we have uh, just doing introduction contracting portion of the business as well as payments. Clay Fondren with uh, Bay of Cape Mechanical, we're uh, a DBE HVAC contractor. Uh, Boris Pratt Wright with the Alliance for Portable Energy. I work on energy policy um, related to utilities, energy efficiency, and renewable energy. Randy uh, Care. New guy here is going to be a BPI certified energy rater and uh, uninvited by Jack Lane. So. All right, and we'll tell him our CEO for USA. All right, so uh, Efficiency First was formed in 2009. Um, you can read for yourself, but essentially they've been working again um, in looking for barriers to a sustainable home performance industry, uh, barriers to energy efficiency um, at, a, at a pretty comprehensive level. So they're really focused on bringing the home performance industry together. And uh, whether it's organizing or convening specific meetings, um, I'm not sure if you guys have attended any of their webinars but they have a wealth of knowledge that they put out to the home performance industry. I probably get an email at least once a week or once every two weeks about an upcoming webinar. And they're really good. Anything from sales to uh, organizing your industry. I think the next one that's coming up is uh, uh, a, basically like a day in the life of a home performance contractor. Kind of for people who are interested in home performance, letting you know the nuts and bolts of what a home performance contractor actually does. Because uh, a lot of people have a misconception of that. And, um, you know, they, they're trying to get us to, get us as home performance professionals to speak with one voice, um, which I think is really 
I'm sure Forrest can attest to the fact that that is really important. And that's another thing that the Alliance for Affordable Energy has been really successful at, is bringing people together to advocate for policies and, and um, ensuring that there's transparency and so forth for ratepayers. So um, this is a way for home performance contractors specifically to have that same voice. Um, they're a membership-based company, uh, membership-based organization. So as they're trying to figure out what to do next, as our chapter is figuring out what policies to tackle next, what our next project is going to be, we reach out to members. That's how we determine what the next steps are. We don't, you know, we try not to be like an ivory tower and decide for ourselves what we think is important. Um, it's really up to everyone who's participating as a member of the organization to determine what the best course of action is. And I'm sure that um, we will sometimes have varying opinions on what the next uh, big thing should be, but I'm hoping that we can um, use some type of uh, consensus model to arrive at what is best for our industry. So again, you know, Efficiency First uh, works to unite the home performance industry, represent the industry in public policy, regulatory discussions, um, share the knowledge that they have from all of their chapters throughout the country, um, promote the benefits of energy efficiency to you know, public education and so forth, uh, create a demand for member products, and build a common platform. And if anybody wants to like stop me or chime in on something, feel free to do so. Okay, so a little bit about their national story. Um, they again, they've been working since you know uh, at least 2009, but their member organizations, member companies, have been working in the industry for decades. And so uh, they've created standards and certifications to meet industry standards. They work very closely with BPI. I don't know if I saw that in the presentation. So I will say that um, if you see, if you look at the BPI website, for instance, you'll see from time to time they'll say, hey, Efficiency First is doing this now. Efficiency First is doing that now. So they work really closely with BPI. Um, 2009 opportunities for significant federal energy efficiency action. They're going to talk a little bit more about some of these things in a couple more slides. But uh, the biggest thing, I guess, that they worked on prior to now is these following um, the Better Buildings Programs, Aura, Homestar, um, and it doesn't say here, but it's coming up. Uh, their lobbying efforts, 3,000 companies. Um, endorsing the Homestar Coalition. Uh, trade associations are also members of Efficiency First. And so what they're, I guess what they're doing here is just letting you know that it's not just a few companies working with. I don't know yet how many members that they have, but uh, it's a pretty large membership base. Challenges and successes, Homestar, uh, one yard line as time expires, that's funny. Uh, some companies face tough times. Of course, many of you can attest to that. Um, local R of better buildings programs launch. Um, some of the programs, are, are all, of you, uh, all of you guys familiar with better buildings program? Somewhat. Um, I think that's something that we really need to start paying more attention to. They, the Better Buildings program specifically talks about code issues and trying to help various municipalities uh, update specifically their energy code as it relates to efficiency first, but um, just better building codes in general. And so, you know, um, what we are facing right now is the policies around um, 
changing what we have now, updating what we have now, which is essentially the 2006 um, IRC. Um, they are look. There is legislation currently in the pipeline, and I don't. Have you been following this legislation before? It was signed. Okay. okay, so you know, we need to. If, if you could, when you come up um, in a second, talk more specifically about that. We can all talk about it, but there are pluses and minuses to the policy from what I've observed. And um, yeah. in a lot of ways, there are successes in it, but um, a couple of things made me really nervous at the same time. And I think that if we would have uh, been a little bit more proactive as a home, the home performance industry in Louisiana if we would have started a bit earlier and just gotten a lot more proactive about um, these things. I think that we could have had a little bit better, uh, a little bit more of a success. Um, but again, we'll talk about that afterwards. Uh, 2012 to present, um, chapter growth. Uh, it's different chapters that they started recently. I'm getting a lot of updates from Efficiency First and from BPI. Uh, the most recent thing this morning, actually, I got an email saying that um, Florida just accepted BPI professionals um, as, as the energy as a, a track for energy rating. So essentially, um, Florida had a real hold on hers ratings. And the Florida Solar Center was essentially controlling all of the policies related to energy rating. And uh, very recently, they let go of, of that hold. And so it kind of freed up the opportunity for DPI to step in and say, hey, you know, BPI building analysts um, have all, the same capacity as HERS providers except that they don't do energy modeling. And so now BPI building analysts are able to do their own energy audits as a way of um, code compliance in Florida. Uh, keep the conversation going. Uh, the Homes Act is something that we should talk a little bit about. Um, support for existing Policy options, PACE is another one that we need to keep our eyes on. Um, and just building the, the uh, foundation you know, uh, for moving things forward. Uh, some people say that, hey, this stuff is way too hard, right? And we don't have time to deal with politics and policies and, you know. <laughs> I don't want to go to any more meetings, right? That's like the big thing that everybody says all the time. Um, what Efficiency First is, is saying to you is that you're not wasting your time working on these policies. And certainly if you're a member, uh, as a member of Efficiency First, um, they take everything, all of our work, um, around organizing and anything that we <coughs> think is critically important as it relates to policy, they will take it very seriously. Okay? And um, they have a lot of capacity to do that, to help us move the policy along. Okay? So, um, again, you know, all of the reason that we're here is to help our industry grow. And what industry growth looks like is up to us. Okay. And so um, that's why we, we've been looking for a really long time actually to determine what would be the best course of action in helping us to organize our market. Um, you know, there are a lot of agencies out there, there are a lot of organizations out there who do this type of work um, at the state level at the local level, uh, and even at the national level. Um, we've decided uh, just in trying to determine what's the best way to affect policy without stepping on other people's toes, like the Alliance, 
we've decided to make the chapter a regional chapter, so it would include all of the Gulf states. And so, for instance, in Mississippi, there's uh, Brent Bailey with 25 by 25, who has done a lot of work in organizing the Mississippi market for energy efficiency and for solar. And so we should tap into that resource, and we should let Brent continue to lead that the Mississippi industry, and we act as sort of a partner with him in helping to advance the policies in Mississippi. Same thing in Louisiana. Um, the Alliance for Political Energy has been leading uh, our market, organizing our market since you know, 25, 35 years ago, right? And so we need to continue to support the alliance in the efforts that they're taking. Hello. Are you here for the uh, meeting? Well, it's cabbage, huh? Are you here for Core USA? No, it's cabbage. Oh, okay. 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 Right, good to see you. <clears throat> good to see you too. All right. Sorry, it's okay. I'm trying to find grab a couple seats over there. Yep. Glad to have you. If you guys could all sign in here, that would be really great so we can keep in touch with you as well. So we're just um, kind of finishing up this presentation here and take a couple more slides, um, but you haven't missed much. You haven't missed the meat yet, so. I don't know why this is here. Um, oh, okay. So these are some of the successes that have already happened, largely in part to the Alliance for Affordable Energy. Um, I don't know to, to what extent Efficiency First was a part of any of that. I don't know if they were a part of that at all. But we just wanted to take note that, you know, it was um, the Alliance for Affordable Energy and other partners that worked with them that helped arrive at these programs. And otherwise, Energy Smart. Um, and again, Forrest is going to continue to talk about things like this, which I think all of us should be very proud of. Uh, this is a, you know, I've been attending meetings and, and following the Alliance for Affordable Energy for several years now, and um, they have consistently um, rose, risen to the challenge on some things that uh, a lot of other agencies have sort of given up on. Um, and this is a very large victory uh, from yesterday. And so, um, you know, I think we should all kind of give a round of applause for that. <laughs> and um, having said that, um, there are a few more slides to go. Um, but I'm going to rush through them really quickly because I want to give uh, Forrest the floor. And... Um, Again, if you have any questions, stop me, but I'm going to breeze through the rest of this because I really want for us to address this one. Um, looking ahead, we want to promote and organize the home performance industry around uh, energy efficiency. And in order to uh, achieve this, we really need you to stay involved. We really appreciate you being here, but we really need you to stay involved with us uh, as we move things forward. So we're going to select a few projects that we want to um, get started on immediately. Uh, I don't think we should do it now. It doesn't seem like it's appropriate to do that now, um, unless you want to. Anybody? Any takers? Okay, so why don't we come back to this after Forrest has done his piece. Um, yeah, we'll come back to both of these slides, actually, uh, and we'll give you all the contact information, all the website information if you want to look up efficiency first later on. Um, and then we're going to select a meeting time uh, for the next meeting. But let's go back to this one. And uh, we will let Forrest Bradley Wright take the floor. and. Uh, you can talk about whatever you like as it relates to uh, 
energy efficiency in general. I know that you have a, a yeah, lot of things. I think I'll keep it for. really um, be, be pretty narrow. Okay. <laughs> I don't mind, although, is that, is that better for your sake? Right. Yeah. Um, I, still I can bring the chair if you want. Yeah, Great. So it is great to see you guys all together and, and Tillman and Core doing something I think that is extremely important, extremely valuable, and it's definitely the time. And that's coming together with all of you, and I hope as time goes on, more and more businesses that are in the home performance industry to focus together on issues and opportunities that affect your industry. And I think that it's really important to recognize that a policy like the one that was reinstated yesterday. So this is the, the energy efficiency programs like New Orleans Energy Smart um, that will begin to be available throughout the rest of the state. That's going to be tens of millions of dollars for energy efficiency work. And that's opportunity for you. This uh, type of policy would be insurmountable for a single company to pursue and get it passed and uh, and the reality is that it takes years <laughs> to get these in place and it's a very unique um, process and there's a unique environment to work in at the Public Service Commission that is obviously quite different from your regular daily business operations and yet their decisions either leave few opportunities in having policy and investment in energy efficiency, which doesn't mean there's no business. Obviously, there are individual customers out there that uh, recognize the value of energy efficiency. But large utility-scale energy efficiency programs not only provide financial incentives, they raise the profile of energy efficiency so that it becomes something that everyone recognizes is uh, an option, something that works, something that's available to them. It provides structure that makes it easier for customers and it makes it easier for your businesses. So the customers can look at their house as a whole, see the array of improvements that would make their home much more efficient, make their bills go down, and then access your respective companies in a way that uh, helps them to get the job done, it helps you to get the work. But this work, like I said, it takes a long time. Um, the Alliance has the tenacity to stick with it. Uh, the, the rules that were reinstated yesterday, um, four years. Four years went into just that specific rulemaking process. And uh, even that builds on some foundations that were, were laid before that. Um, I worked extremely hard this last week to get the business community to weigh in, to show their support for the rules, to show that they recognized the commission was making a decision that would impact them. And they wanted to hear not only from energy efficiency service providers, but they wanted to hear from regular Louisiana businesses, mom and pop shops, grocery, restaurant, retail stores, mechanic shop, whoever. That's who they wanted to hear from. And for my sake, after spending a lot of time with just a pretty small number of people, less people that are in this room right now, that have had a, a substantial role in developing those rules, over two or three years, there's a certain point at which it's time to broaden and come in with a lot more people and a lot more force. And in order to do that, it helps if you all are organized. It helps if you already have cohesion, if you recognize that despite the fact that you, know, you do insulation and you do mechanical work and you, know, you do uh, all different things, that you have common interest in a policy like this. And if you have relationships amongst yourselves, and you can you know, identify that opportunity, you can call each other up and, uh, and show that group support, then you all benefit. There are businesses that do the exact same thing that you do. They're your competitors. They're the ones that are getting the, the job you know, that you might have wanted to get. 
and so maybe you're not used to working with them. But in a situation like this, where a policy can dramatically expand the size of the pie, right? More work for every business. It is absolutely in your best interest to be able to come around the table with businesses that are your competitors for a gig, but are your allies for a policy, and to be able to work together to that purpose. I had a really hard time, I'll be honest. I had a really hard time getting the business support that we needed. We got enough, and we got it done. But it was a lot harder than I think it needs to be. And I want to contrast briefly with the solar industry. The solar industry has recognized how these policies directly affect their financial interest. Despite the fact that they are competing companies, they have worked very closely together. They don't always have the same opinion, but they do a very good job of putting the issue on the table and using their best thinking and bringing their resources together to get to a position that they can push for as a group, and that has paid off. But I guess I would just um, sort of finish that, that kind of appeal to you, and then I'll maybe talk just a little bit more about what the rule is and kind of what comes next. Um, but I, I would kind of just finish that appeal by saying, I appreciate your time a lot. I would not want to have you spending time just to spend time. Uh, I, I would not want you to feel that you're working uh, for something that you don't stand to gain from. You will benefit from this work. But it does take time. Okay. Okay. Sorry. 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 I'll grab you a chair. Oh, the city hall I'm, I'm going to hold this. I'm going to stand back here. You got to hold for something? Okay. And I, I'm sure Jack and Tom are going to end up screaming. There's no one calling in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's take it up. Just do it. There you go. There you go. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I have, I've been on those conference calls enough times that I have dreams about that song, and I wish I could. <laughs> I don't need to have that jingle right up in my head. Uh. But, uh, but anyways, here, here's the, the reality. Um, four years of work lead up to a moment, literally one hour, and the, the entire decision is going to be made at that time. So we see that hour coming up, we see that vote about to happen, you know, a week out, a month out, um, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to marshal the forces to push that towards success. You cannot organize when you need to deploy your resources. It's not possible you must organize and maintain your organization for those moments, not because of that moment. That's the sort of thing that's gonna come up from time to time. You'll find opportunities that you wouldn't even have thought of yet that'll come up, but you've got to be organized beforehand. And I guess I would just say this, you know, those meetings, they happen every month. There are a lot of different topics. Every once in a while, it's gonna be the topic that relates directly to your work. They take hours and hours. Sometimes it's a circus in there. I think it's the most boring circus on earth. I love this work. I care about it. I, I like doing it. I don't have a problem going to meetings. But I realize you cannot go up to those meetings every month. You just can't. You've got work to do. You've got the business to run. But um, when the moment comes, Tillman or I are going to call you. You've got to jump. If you don't, we're going to lose. We squeak by sometimes, but we can be set for success time and time again if we're well organized and we can deliver when those moments come. And yesterday was one, it, it did come together. Um, I'd love to talk you know, another time about ways that as those policy decisions come up, you can bring what you already do to bear. The simplest thing you can do is yourself as a company call that commissioner. They take a tick sheet and they tally for against. We had a lot of people for. Didn't really have anybody against, thankfully, yesterday, except a couple of commissioners. Who didn't really for us. <laughs> <laughs> and again, when it comes down to it, there's only five of them. So having I mean, two commissioners that are really against you means you're pretty close to <laughs> losing or winning based on that. Um, but uh, but here's what I was trying to do that you can certainly help with. Do you have any commercial customers? Are there any businesses that you've done work for? A restaurant? grocery store, a gas station, anything. That's who I was looking for. For me, it's like going to the phone book. Like, who am I going to call? I have no idea who out in the world knows